Hello everyone, my name is Shen, and in this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to deploy a HIPAA-aligned foundation GCP infrastructure using Terraform. And I'm going to use the Terraform engine and the CI-CD pipelines from the data protection toolkit to facilitate and simplify the whole process. What is Terraform engine? Terraform engine is a framework to jumpstart your organization onto GCP. It is an open source Terraform module generator that puts together Terraform resources into complete deployments with values that are specific to your infrastructure. Terraform engine offers different types of recipes. And here I'm demonstrating the foundation recipe, which is the most common baseline piece that healthcare focused GCP infrastructure should usually set up. So what is a foundation recipe? Foundation recipe helps you set up a structure like this. It will help you set up a DevOps project used for remote Terraform state management, CI CD resources to test and deploy your Terraform configs automatically. It will also set up a audit project, which is, which is used to uh, host two audit log syncs, a short-term one-year BigQuery log sync, and also a long-term uh, seven-year cloud storage log sync. And in addition, the foundation, foundation recipe also set up a monitoring project, which is used to host the Forsetti infrastructure. And Forsetti is used to scan and monitor your GCP organization for potential security policy violations. So this is actually a Terraform engine config, and I will use this to generate the Terraform configs using Terraform engine. And uh, so here you can see, I'm specifying the recipe to be the foundation recipe from the default templates offered by Terraform engine. and uh, in each of the data block, I can specify details for each component. So for example, for DevOps project, I specify the project ID to be dbt-demo-1-devops. And similarly for audit, I can specify the name or the project ID for the, for the project itself. And I, I can also specify the data set name and also bucket name for the, for the audit log syncs. And note that we also deliver a set of default organization policies, which is based on best practices. And it's a good set of organization policies that you can use to, uh, to start with in your organization. And also here we have the CI-CD block. Uh, this block will uh, configure the CI-CD components, which will set, for example, which GitHub repo to monitor, which branch to monitor to detect changes, um, uh, push to that branch and auto deploy the changes in that branch to your GCP infrastructure. And it also allows a uh, set addition of, for example, project owners to a specific group and things like those. And also know that there is a disabled block and there's one attribute set to true, which is the bootstrap GCS backend. So the meaning is in the Terraform config, it generates that are used to create the create the DevOps project and the central remote state bucket, configure that specific deployment to save the state locally, not remotely. The reason is because that deployment specifically is creating that uh, DevOps project and the remote state bucket used to store the remote state. So if we haven't create those resources, how can we store the state remotely? So we have to do this in a two-phase way. First, we set this to true meaning disable the remote uh, backend. So the state will be saved locally. And then I'm going to flip this to false. I'm gonna regenerate the Terraform configs with the changed config here, and that will give me the new config and that config will have the, uh, the state configured to remote. Then I can run Terraform init to back up the state to the remote state bucket. So a quick overview for uh, what I'm going to do in this demo. So I'm, I'm going to use Terraform engine and this config to generate the Terraform configs and save them to a local Git repository. And they will later be checked in to my private GitHub repository, which will be the sor source of truth for the Terraform configs for my testing or demo infrastructure. Then I will manually deploy the DevOps project and the CI CD resources. So later deployments or modifications to your infrastructure can be made through pull requests and auto deployed by post submit cloud build jobs once the PR is approved, tested and merged. Then I will make a commit to include all the configs, send it as a PR for review, let pre-submit test to run and pass. I will merge the PR and let per post submit cloud build job to kick in and auto deploy 
the rest of the resources that were not deployed manually. Those will include the audit project, audit resources, monitoring project, and the facility resources. And a few things to note, Terraform Engine does not create the organization. We need to create an empty organization first and configure the billing account properly as well. And the person who is going to do the initial deployments of the DevOps project and the CICD resources should have the necessary permission to create project, use the billing account, set IAM permissions at organization level, and other ones if necessary. OK, so if we actually go to a terminal, and I'm going to run the Terraform engine uh, binary or command. So Terraform engine is uh, shipped as a Go binary. And uh, so first, let me show you this directory, which will be the target uh, directory that I will use to save the uh, generated Terraform configs. And it is a local Git repository, and it, it is configured to or connected to my private GitHub repository here. And this repository is specifically this one. Right now it's empty. I'm going to push, I'm going to like send PRs to including my configs to this to this remote repository. So here, if um, to run the Terraform engine command, I run something like this. So I specify the config path pointing to the demo.yaml, which is this file I just showed you. And then I specify the output path to be the git repo slash demo, which is this directory here. And now it's empty. So now I run this command. It's pretty straightforward. Um, so now I come back here. It's This directory is no longer empty. As you can see, three directories are, generate, are generated. And if we open this, um, uh, directory and see what has been created. So let's see the bootstrap directory first. So if we look at the main.tf, we can see that this Terraform config is actually creating the DevOps project using the project factory module. And it's also creating the a uh, storage bucket. And this bucket will be the Terraform remote state bucket. And it's also configuring additional IAM settings. So this will go first. I'm going to deploy this manually first. And remember, I'm going to go back to the uh, Terraform engine config, flip this to false, and regenerate the Terraform config. So that will make a change in this part, actually. And I'm going to do the Terraform init to back up the state uh, for this deployment uh, to the remote state bucket as well, after the state bucket has been created. And after the bootstrap directory is completed, I'm going to move for, uh, move on to the CI/CD directory. And this directory configures the CI/CD pipelines. And this one has to be done manually um, before, um, before the CI/CD pipeline is actually created. So this one actually configures a bunch of APIs and also IAM permissions to, to enable the Cloud Build service account to view and make modifications to your GCP infrastructure. And most importantly, it configures three Cloud Build triggers, two pre-submit trigger to watch for PRs, pull requests, and one post-submit trigger to watch for pushes to, to a specific branch. And in this case, I've configured that branch to be master branch. And this configs directory contains the actual Cloud Build config that will be executed in the Cloud Build job. So once that is completed, I'm going to uh, uh, send a PR to include all the uh, configs in uh, in all three folders, Bootstrap, CI, CD, and org. And remember that the org folder was not deployed manually. So that will be handled by the CI, CD pipeline. So let's take a look, look at this org folder. So the org folder contains all the other resources that does not need to be done manually and all the resources that will be handled by the CI CD pipelines. And in this case, as part of the foundation recipe, it will um, create the audit project, create the audit resources, create the monitoring project, and create the monitoring resources, which is a for the infrastructure. And uh, oh, as well as the organization policy as well. And uh, so if we actually open each of directory and take a look. So this project.dpt demo when audit uh, slash project, in the configs in this directory correspond to the config that creates the audit project, but not the audit resources. The audit resources was actually um, 
are contained in this main.tf under the audit folder. As you can see here, we are enabling all possible audit logs for all different, all three types and all supported uh, services. And we are creating two audit log sync, the BigQuery one and also the cloud storage one. And as you can see, for example, the cloud storage one is set to expire in seven years. So that's the audit. And let's take a look at the monitoring component as well. So similarly, this uh, monitor slash project, this main.tf uh, contains the Terraform config to create the monitoring project itself. And then if we go to this monitor folder, open the main.tf, as you can see here, we are creating the network for, uh, for SETI. We're creating a, uh, another router and a net to uh, enable Forsetti to communicate because Forsetti will we always set it as a private instance. So uh, we need that net to enable Forsetti to communicate to the internet to download certain packages during startup. And then we use this Forsetti module to uh, to stand up the entire Forsetti infrastructure. And this is actually pretty complicated because Forsetti has few um, few components, including um, AVM, few cloud storage buckets. Uh, a bunch of firewall rules and also a cloud SQL database. So this um, will be handled by the CICD pipeline. And lastly, we are uh, let's take a look at this organization policy folder. So this is the organization policy uh, delivered by the Terraform engine templates by default. Uh, we did not uh, configure them with any attribute, and uh, these are the default ones. Uh, and know that, for example, if you specify uh, allowed shared VPC host project to only specific projects, those information will be propagated to this to this part. And then once these policies are enforced, uh, only those projects can be uh, used as shared VPC host projects. Okay, so that's a quick overview of the configs that are generated by the Terraform engine based on the Terraform engine config here. So now let's do the actual deployment. So first, so this is the, the directory containing the Terraform configs. So let's do the bootstrap uh, uh, deployment first. So to do Terraform deployment, we first do Terraform init, which will pull down the module resources and other Terraform provider resources. And this is now complete. Then I do Terraform apply. So usually you can also do a Terraform plan to show the plan of the resources it's going to create or modify. And in this case, because Terraform apply also shows you the uh, plan, so it's okay. So I, I should take a look at this at this plan and uh, making sure it's, it's doing the right thing and it looks good to me. So I press yes to let it continue. So this deployment will create uh, the DevOps project and also the central remote Terraform state bucket. As you can see that it's creating the project and all of them are handled by Terraform. But do know that the state, the Terraform state for this deployment specifically is stored locally. And we are going to modify the Terraform engine config to change that uh, disabled uh, attribute to false and regenerate the Terraform configs. And the new one will have the state configured to be remote. Then we do Terraform init to back up the state. So it's almost finished.
it's creating a bucket. The, the bucket has been created. And it's completed. So now I'm going back to this config, change this to false, meaning save the state remotely. Then I rerun the Terraform engine command to regenerate the Terraform configs. And here, let's take a look at what it has changed. So the thing it changed is actually this part. It adds additional adds an additional block to configure the backend to be GCS and uh, using the bucket that are just created. So I'm going to do a Terraform we need to transfer the, the state from local to remote. So it detects that the backend of the state has changed and it asks me if I want to transfer the state from local to remote and I, I answer yes. So this part is done. So that means the, the bootstrap deployment is completed. So after this, I'm moving on to the CI CD folder or CI CD deployment. And the one thing that I need to do first is uh, I need to manually connect the GitHub repo to the Cloud Build triggers in the UI, in the Cloud Console. Uh, the reason is because I need to grant Cloud Build a permission to access my private GitHub repo. And that part currently that is not supported by any automation. So this actually this dpt demo one devops project was just actually uh, created by the previous deployment, and here I'm connecting the repository, and I'm selecting the GitHub uh, re GitHub repo, and I choose the right GitHub account, and I choose choose the right uh, repository, and and connect repository. It will ask if I want to create a default push trigger. I skip for now because I'm going to create uh, my own triggers. So this part is completed. So actually, since we are, we are on this Cloud Console, let's take a look at the state bucket we just created. So this is a bucket that was created by the previous deployment, and it's here already. So now if we go back to this directory, and we go to the CI CD folder, and we do a deployment, and similarly, Terraform init, and then Terraform apply. And I take a look at the plan of the resources it's going to create or modify for me. They all looks fine. And I press, I, I type, type yes to continue. So after this deployment is finished, I expect to see three Cloud Build triggers being added in this page. And they are not here yet. So these are completed. And if we go here and I refresh, and I see three triggers are created. And if we open one of them, we can see it's configured to watch for my repo at the master branch, which is what we have configured in the Terraform engine uh, config here. Okay. So at this point, I've configured or I've deployed the bootstrap uh, uh, part and also the CI CD part. And uh, so the, the, the rest of the configs in the org folder will now be handled by the CI CD pipeline. 
And actually at this moment, I can remove myself as the owner or organization admin or building account user uh, from the organization since I've done all the manual steps that I need to do and the rest should be handled and it can be handled by the CI CD pipelines. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a commit uh, to include all the three folders and I will, I'm going to send a, send a PR, a pull request, uh, trying to merge these uh, configs into the master branch of that private GitHub repository. So let's just make sure that I'm on the dev branch because I'm pushing to the dev branch and I'm making a PR from dev branch to the master branch. And I include all the configs that are created by the Terraform engine and then make a commit. Let's say auto generated by Terraform engine. And save and exit. And, uh, and then we push this commit to the remote dev branch. And it will come to this part. And then let's create a pull request. And it, as you can see, it has all the uh, configs from the three directories. Then we create a pull request. So as you can see, a uh, two pre-submit uh, job has started running. And those are the uh, two pre-submit triggers we have configured to watch for uh, uh, PRs sending or uh, trying to merge um, changes to the master branch. And uh, so it, because I'm using a personal repo and uh, uh, I, I think I didn't, uh, so I cannot configure branch protection rules to, to for example, block the uh, submission of this PR if some pre-submit test has failed. But in a uh, enterprise or organization um, repository such as Google Cloud Platform, um, you can and you should configure the pre-submit tests to block submission of your PR. And also, I should ask for a review from one of my teammates. For uh, and uh, but for the demoing purposes, I'm uh, just skipping that part for now. But in the uh, actual develop development cycle for prod or for dev or other environments, you should um, ask for a review from your teammate and also making sure the pre-submit tests uh, pass. So let's take a look at what are wrong in those two pre-submit tests. So let's take a, look at, take a look at this one first. So this one is doing a Terraform formatting check, Terraform formatting check to making sure the the code is the code health is is good, and um, we are also doing a Terraform validate to making sure that there's no uh, simple syntax errors in your Terraform configs. And and let's take look, take a look at the other one. That one is still running, and this one is actually printing out a speculative plan similar to what we just did. Um, uh, in the local machine, to when you do a Terraform apply or Terraform plan, it demonstrates or shows you the potential changes that will be made to your infrastructure once the um, the changes applied. So this is the similar idea where we are running a Terraform plan to show you the changes that will be made to your infrastructure. And in this case, we are deploying or uh, we are creating the resources for the audit project and the monitoring project. We are also configuring the organization policies, uh, which um, are all the configs in the org folder that was not deployed manually uh, by me. And they are now handled by the CI CD pipelines. And for example, as you can see here, uh, this deployment and this one specifically is creating the audit project. And uh, this one specifically is configuring the audit logs for uh, for all three different types and also for all supported services. And these are configuring or adding the, the two log syncs. And the rest are mostly for Fossetti because I think Fossetti has about 50 to 60 resources to be created. 
So in a development cycle, you should take a look in detail of what is going to be changed in your infrastructure, especially when there are uh, deletions. So for example, we add an extra step at the end to detect potential deletions uh, of resources um, uh, that will result if you uh, check in your, or merge your changes. And in this case, because you're well creating everything from scratch and no resource deletion found. So, okay, so now um, so that plan looks good to me and the both, both tests pass. And I assume I ask a, a co-review from one of my teammates. Now I can uh, merge my change to the master branch. So once I merged uh, the change, another cloud build job will kick in. And uh, as you can see, this one here, and this is the post submit uh, deployment job, which will actually do the Terraform apply for me to uh, apply the changes that were just shown in the speculative plan in the pre-submit job. And it's going to print out the Terraform version just for archiving purpose. It's going to ter do Terraform init. It's also going to show a plan as well. And eventually it's going to apply the plan to, the, to your GCP infrastructure. So by the end of this deployment, I expect to see the audit project being created and the audit resources being created and configured in that project. I expect to see the monitoring project being created and also the facility infrastructure to be stand up in that project. And I also expect to see the organization policies being configured according to the ones that are delivered by the Terraform engine. And this uh, part will take about um, 11 to 12 minutes because um, one of the major pieces that will be created is a Cloud SQL database, uh, part of the facility infrastructure. And that takes about five or six minutes to be created. So, um, so we are just going to wait for that to finish. And then right now we are still at the planning phase. Then after this is finished, we, uh, we will move on to the apply phase. And uh, I think if you are watching this video, you can fast forward uh, to, uh, for about 10 minutes and, uh, and then we'll have all the resources provisioned on GCP.
So this deployment has just finished. So this deployment help us create the audit project, audit resources, monitoring project, monitoring resources, and organization policies. So if we go to the, the Cloud Console and take a look at the, uh, the projects it has created for us. So it creates the audit project, the monitor project. So if we go to the audit project and go to the storage, you can see that the seven year long-term storage block sync. And if we go to the uh, BigQuery, you will see that BigQuery lock sync as well. And now if we go to the monitor project, and this project is used to host the entire Fossetti infrastructure. And as you can see, it creates the Fossetti uh, storage buckets it also creates the Fossetti uh, server VM, and it's up and running. It's a private instance. And if we go to the Cloud SQL database, you can see uh, it has also created the Fossetti server database. So that's for the uh, monitoring. And if we actually uh, go to a terminal and try to print the log syncs for this organization, And you can see that there are two log sync being configured and each points to the right uh, destination we just created. So by now, uh, we've um, finished the deployment of the foundation recipe uh, provided by Terraform Engine with the help of CI-CD uh, pipelines. So um, future deployments or future modifications to infrastructure, if you are, for example, uh, adding a new project or if you are, um, adding a new storage bucket they should be um, made that they should be uh, sent as a pr to this re re repository and the same thing will like you will go through the code review make sure the prisma test pass the prospect the speculative plan looks good and then once you submit the pr the the change will auto deployed by the, the by the cloud build uh, deployment job and uh, one thing i want to mention uh, in addition as well is uh, for Fossetti, um, because right now Fossetti also needs to consume a set of uh, policies in order to know what type of rules you want to enforce on your infrastructure. So DPT also provides another tool called Policy Generator, and that's a tool that is also configurable and it's based on templates, and it can provide you a set of best practices uh, for Fossetti policies that you can upload and let Fossetti consume right away. So I think um, that's all the uh, components that are uh, included in the foundation recipe. And uh, that concludes the demo today. And I hope you enjoy the video and thank you.